this early this morning on November 3rd, 2020. It's 2.15 p.m. And I just completed a podcast about uh, a very attractive man on TikTok. Just voicing out feelings and earning out kinks. But what came out during the conversation is what this podcast is going to be about. Excuse the noise. I'm kind of... Uh, I had a, a Jolly Rancher and I'm, I'm a little on the disturbed side right now. So just bear with me for a few moments while I try to uh, get comfortable. What happened was um, in the middle of the podcast uh, while trying to you know, you know, talk myself through the feelings I was experiencing. A video I saw today, and I didn't want to see it. It was actually in a commercial. It was in a political commercial. And I had my headphones on, and I was listening to music, and my eyes were usually on the video. But this particular time, it was just a, the song, and it was just a picture, there's no video. And I just happened to look, and it was the Ahmaud Arbery video. I did not want to see that video. I've done everything in my power to avoid it. And right where I'm not looking for it, it's like a needle being injected in my arm, and I'm not expecting it. And I see him, it's... The part they show is right after the guy shoots him. And he takes off running like he's trying to run away. And he only makes it a few steps and he collapses. Oh my God. It, I'm so disturbed. I'm so disturbed in that area. That racist area between black and white America. You have no idea. I see. The things I see. When I'm not looking, are so frightening to me. Like I could be sitting, so especially when I'm alone, I could sit somewhere, and I can look at a piece of clothing balled up on the floor, and all I see is like, I'll see like a beheaded slave, like with their mouth ripped out, and it's like in the fabric of the clothing, and I don't even mean to see it, but my eyes just form this picture, and I see it. And this goes back to uh, when I lived in Stratford in the mid-90s. My mom and I and my brother, we had sat down and we had watched this documentary on Emmett Till and Maker Evers. I don't know if they've seen this video. And I haven't heard of Emmett Till. I never heard of him up to that point. You want to talk about Disturbed? I hadn't cried harder. What happened to him scared me, scared the living Jesus out of me. And I cried every step of the way. Just what they did, in, they described it in detail, what was done to him. And all I can see in those backwoods, and I can almost hear it in my soul, was him screaming and crying for somebody to help him. And there's nobody there to help. The thought of there not being help. And I started having, I had, I want to say nightmares, but that place awoke in me. Very, I think it it buried itself. And, uh. And I, where it, where it buried itself in me, I think, is why I had a lot of trouble with sex when I got older. Because it it got past my fears and it got into my my orgasm bed. Like I noticed, like when I get really deep and I want to go get deep, it's like there's a cemetery there and I can't like I can't get into it. I used to have dreams all the time about zombies. Walking the earth, coming to get me, and I, I, I think that it may be those, you know, those tormented black souls. Just, I, 
They just don't have nowhere to go. Or they're just walking between that place where the world is. And that place where it's just the planet and God and nature. They're kind of just stuck in between those two places. You don't know. They don't know if it's... What am I doing? Am I, am I creating the world? Or am I just banished from it? It's stuck on that line. Where your body is just at the mercy of the planet itself. And you don't know. You just break every day. You, and you just don't know when it's going to stop. I think that's why when I dig deep in my soul. Or when I get too deep. I always come to that place. I always end up at that place. And just. Just that 10 second video. just It just brought those memories back up. And then it made me think of Trayvon Martin. They played that t- awful tape on the radio. It's like he screamed. Like he saw a gun and he screamed. Like out of fear. And the guy shot him. And then when I saw the Michael Brown tape. Like all I could think about was his mom. And I just saw the blood. And, oh my god. Everything about my sex life was so twisted between 96 and 2002. There was nothing healthy about it. It was like I was trying to like put people in the grave. Like It's like I was purposely driving them there. I don't know. I wasn't hurt or so. Like most of them, I was just trying to get a kiss from them or a hug or something and then something in me was trying to like I was trying to do something about it but I had no idea what I was doing and now every time I I see I can't even look at that Emmett Till maker every video no more I can't even think about it they're so that part of oh when they when it comes out of them where they're spewing spit all out of themselves, where it's, they're not even human. That's what I can't talk about. I try so hard to explain what happened to me. I try so hard to explain what happened to my life. When I get to that point, it's just fire and shame, and I just never know how to speak on it till just now. And then I go back to the times of my life where. Somebody scared themselves. They scared they scared me so bad they went through my normal fear and they just like buried themselves and like in my orgasm bed. And it's like whenever I try to get too deep, like th- these horrid things come out. <sighs> the first time I think it happened, uh, Michael Jackson, the thriller video. That was the first time I ever got scared to death by somebody I I loved more than life itself. And I just couldn't watch that video at all. It took me years to. And and the nightmare started. I would just be sleeping. And then I would be in the dream. And either the news would say there's zombies coming down the street. And I would run to the front door and open and look in. Sure enough, they'd be coming right at, right at my house. Like, I was the only one there, and it was just coming for me. Now, that Emmett Till video, though. Oh, my God. It's, it just set the fear in motion. I remember um, in the 90s, I was watching this uh, Unsolved Mysteries. And, you know, I used to love Unsolved Mysteries when I was younger. It was like... With Robert Stack when he was the host. And that theme song in the beginning. That used to like. That was me trying to embrace that really deep. Eerie pain in me. And they had this one episode. And it was about. uh, It took place in the south. These houses were built on a slave graveyard. It was an unmarked slave graveyard. And the houses were, were haunted by slaves and the eeriness in the house where the slaves were haunted I I don't know I don't want to say it like this but it felt like 
I felt like I was one of them. Like, I know it was the angle of the camera. But the pain and misery of not knowing where you're going or trying to find your way forward in a place where you're, you know, going forward chops your hands off and it chops your feet off. And it rips you apart. Like, I was then for that moment. Like, this spirit running through trying to be seen. Trying to be recognized outside of that pain. Oh, God, I can't. I can't. I think that's why I've been so hermitized. And I, I know... There's, there's poison ivy and there's all types of weeds and thickets and it doesn't look desirable from the street it looks like an unkept mess but right behind that mess is just a small it's just like a small place where something is resting finally it's just resting finally and I'm just trying to tiptoe around it and keep the weeds down at the same time but at the same time my body just wants to enjoy its life I don't want to feel like if I fall deep in love I'm just going to have nightmares about slaves that were murdered and black men being murdered I just I don't want to think about that so painful to me I don't want to think about I want to look in somebody's eyes and just be in love I don't want to look at them and just be like is something going to happen to me today because I didn't get it out when everybody else was getting theirs out I didn't get my fears out at the right time I know Dr. DeGruy talks about it in her book Post Traumatic Slavery Syndrome about the fear of not living past 25 or losing your husband and all those things she talks about in that book. I, th- I think it's in there. I think it's in there. And I think if I fall in love with somebody, I think it might, I might wake something up in there. I think it's there to be waking up. I just need to be strong. I like to listen to uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. I I purchased one of his albums. This one album has like like ten hours of him, of his speeches and his sermons and things like that. His addresses at colleges, all types of things, TV interviews, and I listen to him and I let his voice sit in my mind. And I think if I keep listening to him, whatever's buried deep in there, whatever spirit or harm slave spirit is in there whatever scary dream monster is in there it'll just it'll go to that voice and it'll find its way out before some pimp thinks that well, a naive person he can exercise it out cause I don't know which way to oh god I'm crying about my issues right now I'm supposed to be east of beast I'm not supposed to be feeling like this Anyway, uh, one thing I did want to say, instead of uh, doing a Halloween um, podcast, I took some pictures and I posted them on my Facebook page. It's just Aisha Miller on Facebook. And uh, in the caption, it says, beauty is immortal. And then it says, a happy Halloween. And the way I took the pictures, it was, you know, it was in my bedroom and the way the angle I took the pictures, I almost looked like, uh, I want to say like, like I came back from the dead and I'm haunting this room. And I'm taking pictures before I go back to that place I came from. It has a little bit of that feel to it, but it's, they're beautiful pictures. I, I like to think of myself I'm pretty, but that's when I'm in my head. I think I'm pretty, but I actually, I've never really taken pictures. When I went back and looked at the picture, like, I, f- I worship myself a little bit. I was like, I really love these pictures. I really love these.